My sister started her business by stealing my last inherited money, but karma hits her and the business goes awry. Growing up, my sister Amanda and I were inseparable. We were more than sisters. We were best friends. We shared secrets, dreams, and a bond that felt unbreakable. Our family wasn't wealthy, but our grandmother made sure we were taken care of, leaving us an inheritance that was supposed to secure our futures. That money was our safety net, our ticket to a better life. Amanda had always been the dreamer between us. From a young age, she fantasized about owning her own boutique. She'd sketch dresses and plan out store layouts in her notebooks. I admired her ambition, but knew that dreams like hers needed more than just passion. They needed money, connections, and a lot of luck. When our grandmother passed away, it was a devastating blow. She had been our rock, the glue that held our family together. Her will was read a week after her funeral, and it was clear she had thought of everything. She left a modest amount to our parents and divided the rest between Amanda and me equally. It wasn't a fortune, but it was enough to make a significant impact on our lives. I planned to use my share to pay off student loans and maybe set aside some savings for a rainy day. Amanda, on the other hand, saw this as her golden opportunity to finally start her boutique. Her excitement was palpable, and I couldn't help but be happy for her. Yet there was a lingering concern about how far the money would actually go in making her dreams a reality. As the weeks went by, Amanda's obsession with her business plans grew. Every conversation revolved around the boutique, its name, the location, the decor. I supported her enthusiasm, but often wondered if she was getting ahead of herself. I suggested she take it slow, maybe start small and build up gradually. Amanda, though, was set on making a grand entrance into the fashion world. One evening, as we sat in our tiny apartment, Amanda broached the subject of our inheritance. Sarah, I've been thinking. What if we combined our shares? It would give me the capital I need to really get this boutique off the ground, she said, her eyes shining with excitement. I was taken aback. Amanda, that money is all I have. I need it to pay off my loans and get on my feet. I support your dream, but I can't risk my future for it, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. Her face fell, and for a moment, I saw a flash of something in her eyes. Disappointment, maybe even resentment. But she quickly masked it with a smile. Of course, I understand. I just thought I'd ask, she said, brushing it off. Life continued as usual, but I couldn't shake the feeling that things were different between us. Amanda was more distant, often preoccupied with her plans. I tried to be there for her, offering help and advice, but there was a growing tension that I couldn't ignore. Then one day I checked my bank account and felt my heart stop. The balance was significantly lower than it should have been. Panicked, I went through the transactions and saw several large withdrawals I didn't recognize. My mind raced, trying to figure out what had happened. Had I been hacked? Was there a mistake? I called the bank and after a frustrating conversation, they confirmed that the withdrawals were made with my debit card. But that didn't make any sense. I hadn't made those transactions. I was about to lose it when a horrible thought crossed my mind. I quickly hung up and called Amanda. Hey, can you come over? It's important, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. Sure, I'll be there in a bit, she replied, sounding distracted. When she arrived, I wasted no time. Amanda, did you take money from my account? I asked, my voice trembling with a mix of fear and anger. Her eyes widened and for a split second I saw guilt, but she quickly composed herself. What are you talking about? Why would I do that? She said, her tone defensive. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my emotions in check. There are withdrawals I didn't make, and you're the only other person who has access to my account, I said, watching her closely. Amanda sighed, and I saw her facade crumble. Okay, fine. I took the money. But I did it for us, Sarah. I needed it to start the boutique, and I knew you wouldn't give it to me willingly, she admitted, tears welling up in her eyes. I felt like the ground had been ripped out from under me. My own sister had stolen from me, betrayed my trust. How could you do this, Amanda? That money was all I had, I said, my voice breaking. I'm sorry, I really am. But I was desperate. This boutique is my dream, and I thought, I thought I could make it work and pay you back, she said, reaching out to me. But I couldn't bear to look at her. The bond we had, the trust we shared, it was all shattered. Get out, I said quietly. Sarah, please, get out, I repeated, my voice cold. She left and I was alone with my thoughts, my anger, and my heartbreak. The sister I had trusted more than anyone had betrayed me for her own selfish dreams. As I sat there trying to process what had just happened, 
I couldn't help but wonder what would become of Amanda's precious boutique and how our relationship could ever recover from this betrayal. In the days that followed, I felt like I was living in a nightmare. The money I had relied on to secure my future was gone, taken by the one person I thought I could always trust. I vacillated between anger and heartbreak, the betrayal cutting deeper each time I thought about it. Our parents were the first people I turned to. They had always been our pillars of support, and I hoped they could help me navigate this mess. I invited them over to my apartment, making sure Amanda wouldn't be around. When they arrived, I sat them down and poured out the entire story, from the missing money to Amanda's confession. Their reactions were a mix of disbelief and disappointment. How could Amanda do something like this? My mother, Helen, said, her voice trembling with emotion. Are you sure there's no other explanation? My father, Robert, asked, still trying to grasp the reality of the situation. I'm sure, Dad, she admitted it, I replied, my voice heavy with resignation. They sat in stunned silence, processing the information. Finally, my mother spoke up. We need to talk to her, Robert. This can't go unaddressed. Later that evening, we all gathered at my parents' house. The tension in the room was palpable as Amanda walked in, looking more defiant than apologetic. She glanced around at us, realizing this wasn't going to be an easy conversation. Mom, Dad, what's going on? She asked, her voice laced with false innocence. Amanda, sit down, we need to talk, my father said sternly. She complied, her eyes darting nervously between us. What's this about? Amanda, we know about the money, my mother said, cutting straight to the point. Her face flushed with a mix of anger and embarrassment. Sarah, I can't believe you ran to mom and dad. This is between us. No, Amanda, you stole from me. You betrayed me. This affects all of us. I shot back, my voice quivering with a mix of hurt and rage. Amanda rolled her eyes. I told you I was going to pay you back. I just needed it to get started. You don't get it, do you? That money was everything to me. You had no right to take it, I retorted, feeling my hands shake with emotion. Our parents tried to mediate, but it quickly devolved into a shouting match. Amanda was adamant that she had taken the money for a good cause, and I was equally resolute in my anger and disappointment. It felt like we were going in circles, and no resolution was in sight. Finally, my father spoke up. Amanda, you need to understand the gravity of what you've done. You've not only taken Sarah's money, but also broken her trust. This isn't something that can be easily fixed. Amanda's eyes welled up with tears, and for a moment I saw a glimmer of remorse. I'm sorry, okay? I was desperate. I just wanted to make something of myself. But at what cost? I asked, my voice softer now. You've hurt me deeply, Amanda. I don't know how we can move past this. The conversation continued late into the night, but no real resolution was reached. Amanda left in tears and I felt emotionally drained. Our parents tried to comfort me, but nothing could erase the pain of my sister's betrayal. Over the next few weeks, I tried to put the pieces of my life back together. I took on extra shifts at work, determined to rebuild my savings and pay off my loans without the inheritance. It was a struggle, but I had no other choice. Meanwhile, Amanda threw herself into her boutique, seemingly oblivious to the damage she had caused. The grand opening of her boutique was an event I couldn't bring myself to attend. The thought of celebrating her success, built on the ruins of my dreams, was too much to bear. Instead, I watched from a distance as her boutique quickly became the talk of the town. People flocked to see the new store, and for a while it seemed like Amanda's dreams were coming true. But even as her business flourished, the rift between us grew wider. Family gatherings were strained, with an unspoken tension hanging in the air. Our parents did their best to bridge the gap, but the hurt and anger were too raw for any quick fix. One evening, as I was leaving work, I ran into an old friend, Lily. We hadn't seen each other in years, and after catching up on each other's lives, I confided in her about the situation with Amanda. That's awful, Sarah. I can't believe she did that to you, Lily said, shaking her head in disbelief. Yeah, it's been really tough. I don't know how to move forward, I admitted. Lily gave me a sympathetic look. Have you thought about talking to a lawyer? Maybe there's a way to get your money back. The idea had crossed my mind, but I dismissed it. I don't want to escalate things further. It's already a mess. I understand, but you deserve to be compensated for what she did. Just think about it, okay? She said, giving me a hug before we parted ways. That night, I lay awake, thinking about what Lily had said. I didn't want to drag our family through a legal battle, but I also couldn't ignore the fact that Amanda had stolen from me. The more I thought about it, the more I realized I needed to stand up for myself. 
The next day, I made an appointment with a lawyer. I explained the situation, and he assured me there were legal avenues we could explore. It was a daunting step, but one I felt I had to take. I couldn't let Amanda's betrayal go unpunished, even if it meant further straining our relationship. As the legal proceedings began, Amanda's facade of success started to crack. The stress of the lawsuit, combined with the challenges of running a new business, took its toll on her. I watched from the sidelines, feeling a mix of vindication and sadness. This wasn't how I wanted things to be, but it seemed there was no other way. In the midst of all this, I focused on rebuilding my own life. I worked hard, saved diligently, and slowly began to see the fruits of my labor. It wasn't easy, but each small victory felt like a step toward reclaiming my future. One afternoon, as I was walking home from work, I received a call from my lawyer. Sarah, I have some good news. The court has ruled in your favor. Amanda will be required to pay you back the full amount, plus damages. A wave of relief washed over me. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much this means to me, I said, feeling a glimmer of hope for the first time in months. As I hung up, I couldn't help but wonder how Amanda would take the news. Would this be the wake-up call she needed, or would it drive us further apart? Only time would tell. But for now, I felt a sense of justice, a small victory in the midst of so much turmoil. The journey ahead was still uncertain, but I was determined to move forward, one step at a time. The bond with my sister was shattered, but perhaps in time, we could find a way to mend the pieces. Until then, I would focus on my own path, rebuilding my life with resilience and hope. The day after the court ruling, I received a text from Amanda. It was a simple message, but it carried the weight of our fractured relationship. We need to talk. I felt a knot in my stomach. Facing her was the last thing I wanted to do, but avoiding it wouldn't solve anything. We agreed to meet at a quiet cafe downtown, a neutral ground where emotions wouldn't run as high as they would in our family home. When I arrived, Amanda was already there, nervously fidgeting with her coffee cup. I took a deep breath and walked over to her table, my heart pounding in my chest. She looked up as I approached, her eyes red and puffy. It was clear she'd been crying. Hi, I said softly, sliding into the seat across from her. Hi, she replied, her voice barely above a whisper. There was a long, uncomfortable silence as we both tried to find the right words. Finally, Amanda spoke. I don't know where to start. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I never meant for things to get this bad. I sighed, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. Amanda, you stole from me. You lied to me. How did you think this would end? She looked down, her fingers trembling. I thought I could make it work, you know? I thought if I could just get the boutique off the ground, everything would fall into place. I never wanted to hurt you. But you did, I said, my voice breaking. You hurt me more than I can put into words. And now, because of your actions, we're both suffering. Amanda wiped away a tear. I know, I know I've made a mess of everything, and now the court is forcing me to pay you back, which I can't afford. My business is already struggling. I couldn't help but feel a pang of pity for her. Despite everything, she was still my sister. But I couldn't let that overshadow the fact that she had betrayed me in the worst way possible. Amanda, I don't know how to move past this. Trust doesn't just come back overnight. I understand, she said, her voice barely audible. I just, I don't want to lose you, Sarah. You're my sister and I love you. Please tell me what I can do to make this right. Her plea hung in the air, and I felt the weight of her words. Part of me wanted to forgive her, to go back to how things were before the betrayal. But another part of me knew that things could never be the same. Trust was fragile, and once broken, it was nearly impossible to fully restore. I don't have an answer for you, Amanda, I said finally. I think we both need time, time to heal, to figure out how to move forward. Right now, I just can't. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. I understand. I'll give you all the time you need. Just please don't shut me out completely. I won't, I promised, though I wasn't entirely sure if I could keep that promise. As I left the cafe, I felt a whirlwind of emotions. The conversation had brought no real resolution, but it was a start, a small step toward understanding, if not forgiveness. Meanwhile, Amanda's boutique continued to face challenges. She had invested so much of herself into the business, and it was heartbreaking to watch it falter. Her initial success was overshadowed by poor management decisions and financial missteps. The vibrant store that had once attracted crowds was now struggling to stay afloat. One afternoon, I received an unexpected visitor at work. It was Amanda, looking more disheveled than I'd ever seen her. 
She waited for me in the lobby, and as I approached, I could see the desperation in her eyes. Can we talk? She asked, her voice trembling. I nodded, leading her to a quiet corner. What's going on? My boutique. It's failing, Sarah. I don't know what to do. I'm drowning in debt and I can't pay you back. I need help, she admitted, her voice breaking. I felt a surge of mixed emotions. Part of me wanted to turn her away, to let her face the consequences of her actions. But another part of me, the part that still loved my sister despite everything, felt compelled to help. Amanda, I don't know how I can help you. I'm still trying to recover from what you did, I said honestly. I know, and I don't expect you to forgive me or fix everything. I just, I need advice, guidance. Maybe we can find a way to save the boutique together, she pleaded. Her words struck a chord. Despite my anger and hurt, I couldn't ignore her plight. She was my sister and she was struggling. All right, I said reluctantly. I'll help you, but on one condition. We do this together, transparently, and you need to start taking responsibility for your actions. Amanda nodded eagerly. I promise, Sarah. I'll do whatever it takes. We began working together, poring over financial records and business plans. It was a daunting task, but I could see Amanda's genuine effort to make amends. She was finally taking responsibility, and it was a small glimmer of hope in an otherwise bleak situation. We spent countless hours brainstorming ways to cut costs, attract customers, and improve the boutique's operations. Amanda reached out to former employees and customers, seeking feedback and trying to repair damaged relationships. Slowly but surely, we started to see some positive changes. Despite our progress, the financial strain remained. Amanda's debts were overwhelming, and it was clear that without significant help, the boutique wouldn't survive. I suggested she look into business loans or investors, but her credit was already shot, and finding willing investors was proving difficult. One evening, as we were wrapping up a particularly exhausting day, Amanda turned to me. Sarah, I don't know how to thank you. I don't deserve your help, but I'm so grateful. I managed a small smile. We're family, Amanda. We have to look out for each other, even when things get tough. It was a tentative step toward rebuilding our relationship. Trust would take time, but working together on the boutique had reminded us of the bond we once shared. We were far from the close-knit sisters we used to be, but we were making progress, one small step at a time. As the boutique's prospects began to improve, so did my own situation. I had managed to save enough to cover my immediate expenses and was slowly paying off my loans. The lawsuit had been a necessary step, but it was clear that reconciliation was equally important. One day, Amanda approached me with a proposal. Sarah, I know this might sound crazy, but what if you became a partner in the boutique? You've been so instrumental in turning things around, and I can't do this without you. I was taken aback. The idea of partnering with Amanda after everything that had happened was daunting, but I couldn't deny the progress we'd made together. I'll think about it, I said cautiously. As I mulled over her proposal, I realized that this could be an opportunity for both of us. It wouldn't erase the past, but it might pave the way for a better future. Perhaps in working together, we could rebuild not just the boutique, but our relationship as well. In the end, I agreed to become a partner. It was a leap of faith, but one I was willing to take. We drew up a formal partnership agreement, ensuring transparency and mutual accountability. It was a new beginning, fraught with challenges, but also with the potential for healing and growth. Working side by side, Amanda and I faced the ups and downs of the business world together. We celebrated small victories and navigated setbacks, learning to communicate and trust each other again, the boutique slowly regained its footing, attracting loyal customers and gaining a reputation for quality and service. Our relationship, though still scarred, began to mend. We had a long way to go, but the shared experience of saving the boutique had brought us closer. Amanda's betrayal would always be a part of our history, but it no longer defined our future. As we stood together at the boutique's first anniversary celebration, surrounded by friends, family, and customers, I felt a sense of hope. Amanda turned to me, her eyes reflecting the journey we'd been on. Thank you, Sarah, for everything. I smiled, feeling a warmth that had been missing for so long. We did this together, Amanda, and we're just getting started. The path ahead was still uncertain, but for the first time in a long time, I felt like we were on the right track. Together, we could face whatever came our way, stronger and wiser for the trials we had endured. The following months were a whirlwind of activity. Amanda and I threw ourselves into the boutique, determined to make it a success. 
Our combined efforts were paying off, and the boutique was starting to gain traction. It wasn't easy, but the hard work was slowly beginning to bear fruit. The grand reopening of the boutique was a pivotal moment for both of us. Amanda had poured her heart and soul into this venture, and despite everything, I found myself rooting for her. The day was fast approaching, and we were working tirelessly to ensure everything was perfect. The boutique had undergone a transformation, reflecting the lessons we had learned and the growth we had experienced. On the morning of the grand reopening, I arrived at the boutique early. The sun was just beginning to rise, casting a warm glow over the storefront. As I unlocked the door and stepped inside, I felt a surge of pride. The boutique looked stunning. Every detail, from the carefully curated displays to the elegant decor, spoke of the hard work and dedication we had invested. Amanda arrived shortly after, her face lit up with excitement. Sarah, it looks amazing, she said, giving me a hug. Thanks, Amanda. We did this together, I replied, feeling a sense of camaraderie that had been missing for so long. We spent the morning putting the finishing touches on everything, making sure the boutique was ready to welcome customers. As the opening hour approached, a mix of nerves and anticipation settled over us. This was the moment we had been working toward, and we were ready to face it head on. The grand reopening was a success. Customers streamed in, drawn by the boutique's charm and the promise of unique, high-quality fashion. Amanda and I worked seamlessly together, greeting customers, answering questions, and making sales. The energy was electric, and for the first time in a long time, I felt a genuine connection with my sister. As the day progressed, familiar faces began to appear. Friends, family, and former customers all came to show their support. Among them was Lily, who had been a constant source of encouragement throughout this journey. Congratulations, Sarah, the place looks fantastic, she said, giving me a warm hug. Thank you, Lily. I couldn't have done it without you, I replied, feeling a surge of gratitude. The day flew by in a blur of activity. By the time we closed the doors that evening, we were exhausted but exhilarated. The boutique had exceeded our expectations, and the positive feedback was overwhelming. Amanda and I sat together in the quiet of the empty boutique, savoring the moment. We did it, Sarah. I can't believe we actually did it, she said, her eyes shining with happiness. We did, I agreed, feeling a sense of accomplishment that was all the more meaningful given the challenges we had faced. In the days that followed, the boutique continued to thrive. The grand reopening had generated a buzz that translated into steady business. Amanda and I settled into a rhythm, working together to manage the boutique and ensure its continued success. Despite the positive momentum, there were still moments of tension and unresolved issues between us. The betrayal and hurt couldn't be erased overnight, and we both knew it would take time to fully heal. But we were making progress, and that was what mattered. One evening as we were closing up, Amanda turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Sarah, I've been thinking. I know we've come a long way, but I feel like there's still so much I need to make up for. I want to do something to show you how much I appreciate your help and support. Amanda, you don't have to... I began, but she interrupted me. Please, let me do this. It's important to me, she insisted. Curious, I nodded. All right, what do you have in mind? She smiled, her eyes twinkling with excitement. How about a weekend getaway? Just the two of us. We could use a break, and it would be a chance to spend some quality time together. The idea was appealing. We had been so consumed with the boutique that we hadn't taken any time for ourselves. A weekend away sounded like the perfect opportunity to relax and reconnect. That sounds great, Amanda. Let's do it. A few weeks later, we set off on our getaway. We chose a charming bed and breakfast in a quaint town a few hours away. The drive was filled with laughter and reminiscing about our childhood, and I felt a sense of hope that had been missing for so long. The bed and breakfast was idyllic, nestled in the countryside with picturesque views and cozy rooms. As we settled in, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. This was exactly what we needed. Over the weekend, we explored the town, indulged in delicious meals, and spent hours talking and reconnecting. It was a reminder of the bond we had shared before everything went wrong. We laughed, we cried, and we began to heal. On the last night of our trip, we sat on the porch watching the sunset. Amanda turned to me, her expression serious. Sarah, I want you to know how truly sorry I am for everything. I know I can't change the past, but I promise to do everything I can to make things right. Her words were heartfelt, and I could see the sincerity in her eyes. Amanda, I forgive you. It's going to take time, 
but I believe we can get through this together, I said, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I felt a sense of closure. The journey had been painful and challenging, but it had also brought us closer. We had faced our demons and we were stronger for it. Returning to the boutique, we were rejuvenated and more determined than ever to make it a success. The experience had solidified our partnership and given us a renewed sense of purpose. We worked harder than ever, and the boutique flourished, becoming a beloved fixture in the community. Amanda and I continued to navigate the complexities of our relationship, but the foundation of trust and understanding we were rebuilding made all the difference. The journey was far from over, but we were on the right path. As I stood in the boutique one evening, looking around at the beautiful space we had created, I felt a sense of pride and gratitude. The road had been long and difficult, but it had led us to a place of growth and reconciliation. And for that, I was truly thankful. The boutique's initial success brought a sense of accomplishment and relief, but it also came with a new set of challenges. As the months passed, Amanda and I found ourselves juggling more responsibilities than ever before. The pressure of maintaining the boutique's reputation and managing the daily operations began to take its toll. At first, the signs were subtle. Amanda seemed more stressed and tired, often staying late into the night to manage inventory or plan events. I noticed her temper flaring more easily, and our once smooth collaboration became strained. I tried to be patient and understanding, but the underlying tension between us started to resurface. One afternoon, I arrived at the boutique to find Amanda in a heated argument with one of our suppliers. The usually polite and composed Amanda was now shouting, her face red with frustration. As I approached, the supplier threw up his hands in exasperation and stormed out. Amanda, what's going on? I asked, concerned. She turned to me, her eyes filled with anger and exhaustion. That was our third late shipment this month, Sarah. We can't keep dealing with this. Our customers are noticing and it's hurting our reputation. I sighed, trying to remain calm. I understand, but yelling at our suppliers isn't going to help. We need to find a solution, not create more problems. She glared at me, her eyes flashing. It's easy for you to say. You're not the one handling these issues every day. Her words stung, and I felt my own frustration bubbling up. Amanda, we're in this together. I'm here to help, but we need to work as a team. She sighed, the anger in her eyes softening. I know, I'm sorry, it's just, it's so much. I feel like everything is slipping through my fingers. I placed a hand on her shoulder. We'll figure it out, Amanda. Let's take a step back and look at our options. Together, we began to address the issues plaguing the boutique. We reached out to new suppliers, revamped our inventory management system, and worked on improving our customer service. The changes helped, but the underlying tension between us remained. One evening, as we were closing up, Amanda turned to me with a worried expression. Sarah, there's something I need to tell you. I felt a knot form in my stomach. What is it? She took a deep breath. I've been keeping something from you. The boutique's finances are worse than I've let on. We're barely breaking even, and I've had to take out a loan to cover some of our expenses. I stared at her, my mind racing. Amanda, why didn't you tell me sooner? We could have worked together to find a solution. I didn't want to worry you, she admitted, her voice trembling. I thought I could handle it on my own, but things have gotten out of control. I felt a surge of anger and frustration, but I forced myself to stay calm. We need to be transparent with each other, Amanda. Hiding things only makes it worse. We'll get through this, but we need to be honest and work together. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I'm sorry, Sarah. I don't want to lose everything we've worked so hard for. Neither do I, I said softly. We'll find a way to fix this. We spent the next few weeks meticulously reviewing our finances, cutting unnecessary expenses, and finding ways to increase our revenue. It was a daunting task, but we were determined to save the boutique. As we worked through the financial issues, Amanda and I had to confront the deeper issues between us. The unresolved tension from the past, the lingering resentment and hurt, all came to the surface. We had some intense and emotional conversations, but they were necessary for us to move forward. One night after a particularly difficult day, Amanda and I sat in the boutique surrounded by the remnants of our hard work. The boutique was empty, the lights dimmed, and the quiet was almost deafening. Sarah, do you ever regret getting involved in this? Amanda asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I looked at her, surprised by the question. No, I don't. It's been hard, but I believe in what we're doing, and I believe in you. She smiled weakly. I don't know what I'd do without you. You'd find a way, 
I said, my voice firm. But you don't have to. We're in this together, remember? Amanda nodded, her eyes reflecting a mix of gratitude and determination. Together. Despite the challenges, we began to see some progress. The boutique started to stabilize and our efforts were paying off. The financial strain was still there, but we were managing it better and our relationship was slowly healing. However, the cracks in the foundation were still there, lurking beneath the surface. The strain of our past, the pressure of running the business, and the constant fear of failure weighed heavily on both of us. One afternoon, I noticed Amanda was particularly quiet. She seemed distracted, her mind elsewhere. I approached her gently. Amanda, are you okay? She looked up at me, her eyes filled with worry. I've been feeling so overwhelmed lately, Sarah. I'm scared that no matter how hard we try, it won't be enough. I took her hand, squeezing it reassuringly. It's normal to feel that way, Amanda, but we can't let fear paralyze us. We've come this far and we can't give up now. She nodded, taking a deep breath. You're right, I just need to keep reminding myself of that. We continued to work hard, pushing through the difficulties and supporting each other as best as we could. The boutique was more than just a business to us. It was a symbol of our resilience and determination, but the cracks in the foundation couldn't be ignored forever. As we navigated the challenges, we had to confront the reality that our relationship and the boutique were fragile. The strain of the past and the pressure of the present were constant reminders of how easily things could fall apart. One day, as we were preparing for a major sale event, Amanda's stress reached a breaking point. She snapped at an employee, causing a scene in front of customers. I pulled her aside, trying to calm her down, but she was inconsolable. I can't do this anymore, Sarah, she shouted, her voice filled with frustration and despair. It's too much. I felt a pang of sympathy, but also a sense of urgency. Amanda, we need to take a step back. You're burning out, and it's affecting everything. She sank into a chair, her head in her hands. I don't know what to do. I knelt beside her, my voice gentle. We need to take care of ourselves, Amanda. The boutique won't survive if we don't. Let's take a break, reassess, and come up with a plan. Amanda looked up at me, her eyes filled with exhaustion. You're right. I just, I don't want to let everyone down. You won't, I assured her but we can't keep going like this. Let's focus on finding a balance and taking care of each other. As we faced the cracks in the foundation, Amanda and I realized that our strength lay in our partnership. We couldn't fix everything overnight, but by supporting each other and being honest about our struggles, we could begin to heal and rebuild. The journey was far from over, but we were learning to navigate it together. The boutique was a reflection of our resilience, and as long as we continued to work together, we knew we could face whatever challenges came our way. As I looked at Amanda, I saw not just my sister, but my partner and friend. We had been through so much, and there was still a long road ahead. But for the first time in a long time, I felt a sense of hope and determination. Together, we would find a way to mend the cracks and build a stronger foundation for the future. Despite our best efforts, the pressure of managing the boutique continued to mount. The cracks in our foundation widened, and it became increasingly difficult to keep up appearances. Amanda and I found ourselves arguing more frequently, the stress of our situation taking its toll on both of us. One particularly difficult day, Amanda's frustration boiled over. Sarah, I can't keep doing this. We're drowning in debt, and no matter what we do, it's never enough, she snapped, her voice filled with desperation. I know it's hard, Amanda, but we can't give up now. We need to keep pushing forward. I replied, trying to remain calm. I don't think you understand how close we are to losing everything, she said, her eyes filled with tears. The loan payments are due and we don't have enough to cover them. The reality of our situation hit me like a ton of bricks. We were on the brink of collapse and there seemed to be no way out. I felt a wave of hopelessness wash over me, but I knew I couldn't let Amanda see it. We'll figure something out. We always do, I said, trying to sound confident. As the days passed, our financial situation grew more dire. Customers were dwindling and our debt was piling up. Amanda's stress levels skyrocketed, and it was clear she was reaching her breaking point. She started to withdraw, her once vibrant energy replaced by a deep sense of despair. One evening as we were closing the boutique, Amanda broke down. I can't do this anymore, Sarah. I've failed. The boutique is failing and it's all my fault, she sobbed, collapsing into a chair. I rushed to her side, wrapping my arms around her. Amanda, it's not your fault. We've both done everything we can. We'll get through this together, I said, trying to comfort her. 
but deep down I knew our options were running out. We were caught in a downward spiral, and it seemed there was no way to stop it. As much as I wanted to believe we could turn things around, the harsh reality was that we were facing a seemingly insurmountable challenge. The next morning I woke up to a message from the bank. Our loan was due, and we didn't have the funds to cover it. Panic set in as I realized the gravity of our situation. We were on the brink of losing the boutique, the business we had fought so hard to build. I shared the news with Amanda, and the look of defeat in her eyes was heartbreaking. What are we going to do? She whispered, her voice barely audible. We'll figure it out, I said, though my confidence was waning. But as the days turned into weeks, it became clear that our efforts were not enough. The boutique's debts continued to mount, and our financial situation became increasingly dire. We were faced with the harsh reality that we might have to close the business we had poured our hearts and souls into. In our darkest moments, Amanda and I leaned on each other for support. We spent countless nights talking, reminiscing about our journey and the dreams we had for the boutique. It was a bittersweet reminder of how far we had come and how much we had fought to keep our dream alive. Despite the impending loss, we found solace in our renewed bond. The boutique had brought us together in ways we never expected, and though we were facing an uncertain future, we knew we had each other. As we prepared to face the inevitable, Amanda and I made a promise. No matter what happened, we would not let this defeat define us. We would find a way to rebuild, to start anew, and to keep moving forward. The downward spiral was a painful chapter in our journey, but it also brought us closer together. In the face of adversity, we found strength in each other, and that was something no financial struggle could ever take away. The day we had dreaded finally arrived. Amanda and I stood in the boutique, our hearts heavy with the knowledge that this might be the last time we'd see it filled with customers. We had announced a massive clearance sale to pay off as much of the debt as possible, hoping for a miracle that would save our dream. The turnout was better than expected. Customers came in droves, eager to snatch up the discounted items. For a brief moment, it felt like the old days when the boutique was thriving. Amanda and I worked tirelessly, greeting customers and ringing up sales. The flurry of activity was a welcome distraction from the looming crisis. As the day drew to a close, Amanda and I tallied up the earnings. It was a significant amount, but still not enough to cover the debts. We exchanged a grim look, knowing this was likely our last stand. Just as we were about to close up, a familiar face walked through the door. It was Mrs. Harris, a local businesswoman known for her investments in small businesses. She had always been a loyal customer, and her presence now felt like a beacon of hope. Hello, ladies, she said, her eyes scanning the nearly empty shelves. I heard about your sale. What's going on? Amanda and I explained our situation, laying bare the financial struggles and the mounting debt. Mrs. Harris listened intently, her expression thoughtful. I've always admired your boutique and the hard work you've put into it, she said after a moment. I believe in supporting local businesses, especially those with as much heart as yours. Amanda and I exchanged a hopeful glance. What are you saying? I asked cautiously. Mrs. Harris smiled. I'm saying that I'd like to invest in your boutique. I can provide the capital you need to get back on your feet with the condition that I become a partner. The offer was like a lifeline. Amanda and I were speechless, overwhelmed by the unexpected turn of events. We, we don't know what to say, Amanda stammered. Say yes, Mrs. Harris replied with a warm smile. Together, we can turn this place around. We didn't need to think twice. This was the miracle we had hoped for, a chance to save our dream and rebuild our future. Amanda and I eagerly agreed, feeling a renewed sense of hope and determination. In the weeks that followed, Mrs. Harris's investment breathed new life into the boutique. We were able to pay off our debts and make much-needed improvements to the store. Business picked up and the boutique regained its reputation as a beloved local treasure. But the most significant change was in Amanda. The experience had humbled her, teaching her the value of honesty, transparency, and hard work. She approached the business with a new perspective determined to make things right. As for me, I found solace in the knowledge that we had weathered the storm together. The boutique's revival was a testament to our resilience and the power of second chances. One evening, as we were closing up, Amanda turned to me with a smile. We did it, Sarah. We really did it. I smiled back, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. We had a lot of help, but yes, we did. Amanda nodded, her eyes reflecting the journey we had been on. I'm so grateful for you, Sarah. For everything. And I'm grateful for you, Amanda, I replied. We're stronger together. 
The boutique had become more than just a business. It was a symbol of our bond, our perseverance, and the karma that had brought us full circle. Despite the hardships, we had emerged stronger, wiser, and ready to face whatever the future held. Months passed, and the boutique continued to thrive under our renewed partnership with Mrs. Harris. The journey from betrayal to redemption had been arduous, but it had also been profoundly transformative. Amanda and I had not only saved the boutique, but had also salvaged our relationship, forging a bond stronger than ever before. One evening, as we were closing up after another successful day, Amanda suggested we take a walk. The cool evening air was refreshing, and the sky was painted with the hues of a setting sun. We strolled through the quiet streets, reflecting on everything we had been through. Remember when we first started this journey? Amanda asked, a nostalgic smile playing on her lips. We were so naive, thinking everything would be smooth sailing. I chuckled softly. Yes, we were, but we learned so much along the way, not just about business, but about ourselves and each other. Amanda nodded, her expression thoughtful. I've done a lot of thinking lately, about how I let my ambition blind me and how it hurt you. I've realized that true success isn't just about achieving your dreams. It's about the relationships you build and the integrity you maintain. I looked at her, seeing the sincerity in her eyes. Amanda, you've come a long way. We both have. And as hard as it was, I think this journey made us better people. She smiled, a hint of relief in her eyes. Thank you, Sarah, for forgiving me, for standing by me, and for helping me see what really matters. We continued walking the silence between us comfortable and filled with mutual understanding. The town was quiet, the streets bathed in the soft glow of streetlights. It felt like a moment out of time, a chance to appreciate how far we had come. As we rounded a corner, we saw Mrs. Harris's familiar figure sitting on a bench, enjoying the evening. She waved us over, her face lighting up with a warm smile. Hello, ladies. Taking a well-deserved break? We are, Amanda replied, sitting down next to her and reflecting on everything that's happened. Mrs. Harris nodded knowingly. It's important to look back and see how far you've come. You both have done an incredible job, not just with the boutique, but with your relationship. Thank you, I said, feeling a swell of gratitude. We couldn't have done it without your support. You had the strength all along, Mrs. Harris said. Sometimes we just need a little push to see it. As the three of us sat there, enjoying the peaceful evening, I felt a profound sense of contentment. The boutique had become a symbol of our resilience, a testament to our ability to overcome adversity. But more than that, it was a reminder of the importance of family, forgiveness, and the power of second chances. In the weeks and months that followed, Amanda and I continued to grow both as business partners and as sisters. We faced challenges with a newfound sense of unity and purpose, always remembering the lessons we had learned. The boutique flourished, becoming a beloved fixture in the community and a source of pride for both of us. One day, as we were preparing for a community event at the boutique, Amanda turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Sarah, do you think Grandma would be proud of us? I smiled, feeling a warmth in my heart. I think she would be very proud. She always believed in us, and I think she knew we'd find our way. Amanda nodded, her eyes shining with emotion. I like to think she's watching over us, guiding us along the way. As the event began and the boutique filled with laughter and joy, I looked around at the vibrant space we had created. It was more than just a business. It was a reflection of our journey, our struggles, and our triumphs. And in that moment, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the hardships that had made us stronger, for the people who had supported us, and for the sister who had stood by my side through it all. As the sun set on another successful day, Amanda and I stood together looking out at the bustling boutique. We did it, Sarah, she said softly. We really did it. We did, I agreed, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. And we'll keep doing it, together. The journey had been long and filled with challenges, but it had also been a testament to our resilience and our unwavering bond. As we faced the future, I knew that whatever came our way, we would handle it together. Because in the end, that's what family is all about. And as I looked at Amanda, I knew that our story was far from over. It was just the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with hope, love, and the promise of a brighter tomorrow.